Starting with a simple domain name, it's easy for a hacker or researcher to find technical information about any organization using open source intelligence tools like Multego. We'll show you how simple this is to do on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Open source intelligence tools like Multego allow you to take a small detail you know about an organization, like a domain name or a website, and turn it into a whole complete picture of the technical details behind a particular organization's network. What that means is being able to pin down the specific details of where they've made their investments in server technology, which IP addresses they run, what types of services they make available to their internal and external users, and all the other information you would need to build a technical picture of an organization's um, technology that they're incorporating. So to do this, we can focus on open source intelligence tools, and Multego is chief among them for being able to run things called transforms, which are kind of like a combination between an API poll and an algorithm to sort that data. The goal of this is to be able to pull in large amounts of data based on um, these requests that we make, these API polls, and uh, arrange that data in a way that it displays relationships that are important to our investigation in a way that's much more clear and organized than a traditional researcher just making you know, Google searches or something would be able to do by themselves. So by automating this process and allowing us to easily enrich data to kind of build a chain of information to branch our investigation off of, we can get kind of the core picture of what an organization looks like on a technical level with these sorts of techniques. Now today we're gonna to be focusing on some very specific information. First, we're going to take a look at the website and identify any tracking um, URLs or any tracking codes that might be used to keep an eye on the traffic on this website, because it might give us an indication of other websites that the same organization owns and keeps an eye on the traffic of with the same codes. Next, we'll need to look up the DNS information, which tells us which servers are pointing to the actual IP address that the website is hosted on. And this will give us the opportunity to, opportunity to explore for other websites hosted with the same DNS server, often belonging to the same organization. So after we discover the DNS servers involved in the organization's business, we can start to discover things like the MX server, which is what handles the email, and the name server, which handles the traffic to the website, and often will interface with anyone who's looking to um, use the website's uh, public-facing applications or anything like that. Finally, we'll go into the net block, which is a block, a range of IP addresses assigned to the various services or um, websites that the organization runs, and typically will be segmented so you can see a lot of other sorts of IP addresses that would be involved in that particular organization's services they offer publicly on the internet, or even privately internally, depending on how they're configured. Last, the final piece of information is the AS number, which is a big group of uh, net blocks that kind of operate with the same set of rules. And this will typically be either administered by a telecommunications company or by a lot of major uh, companies themselves if they have a lot of services that need to be online. So if we're able to go through this chain from top to bottom until we get the AS number starting all the way from the website or the web URL, we're able to go back up the chain after we've enriched the data a little bit and start to see patterns and relationships and all the things we can pin to these attributable facts about the organization. Now that's important because this will keep our investigation focused and keep kind of the core facts that we've been able to establish as the centerpiece of all these uh, Multego uh, transforms that we're running to pull in more information so that we avoid getting lost in kind of the weeds of our investigation. So the point of this is to effectively and efficiently find the technical information behind an organization so we can make our investigation as streamlined as possible and ensure that we're able to come back with the right information the first time we run this process. So in order to do this, you'll need to have either Kali Linux installed, as Multego Community Edition is installed by default, or you can go ahead and download the Multego Community Edition and just run it on your platform because it runs on Java. You have to have Java, but once you do, it will run on basically any operating system. Now, once you have this ready to go, which we'll show you how to install, it only takes a couple transforms in, or in order to lead you all the way from the web domain all the way to the AS number. And you can start to discover surprising relationships between different websites and maybe even discover services that are given by the same people that might not officially acknowledge uh, that they are all part of the same company or the same organization. So we'll start with an example domain and see how far we can enrich it. It's pretty simple, so let's get started. To download Multego, you'll need to go to the Perturba website and click on the Download section. Before you do this, you'll notice that there is a 
click to register button on the lower left side and you'll need to register for a free account in order to use Maltego. So make sure to take care of this first, otherwise you'll get stuck in the login window as soon as you download Maltego Community Edition. So at the download page, you can see it has a version for Windows, Linux, and Mac. You can go ahead and download the particular file type you want and then just install it and open it and it will run with Java. You will need to have Java installed, so make sure you have that done first. So once you have Maltego loaded, go ahead and you'll see this initial main screen. Uh, I think in a previous tutorial, someone showed how to do a, uh, a Maltego machine, but we're gonna show you how to do this much more hands-on because it's just better practice and it'll teach you a bit about how networks uh, within an organization work. So we're gonna use Wonder How To as our example because that's uh, where this is gonna be. So we'll take the domain of uh, wonderhowto.com and click on the domain alias and just drag and drop it from the left side onto the main canvas window. So we can type in wonderhowto.com, oh, correctly. And then from this initial uh, URL, we can get started with doing some of the uh, building of the chain of the hard technical details of this network. So the first thing we're gonna look for is go from the URL to the website. So this will have the actual website associated with it and we can use a quick lookup to do that. So once this transform completes, then we have a website that is uh, loaded into Multego and we can right mouse click on it and then search for any tracking codes that might be in use on other websites that the same organization uh, owns. So in this case, we get a tracking code back and we can use this tracking code to find other uh, websites, which type in other, and we see two other sites with the same code. Now, if uh, this organization happened to own a bunch of other websites and use the same tracking code on them, this would be how we could figure that out. But in this case, it looks like they're not using a tracking code that's used elsewhere. So that's a little bit of a dead end. But we can take the wonder how to uh, domain and we can still start to search for the next step, which is the MX server, uh, which we can do uh, to DNS name MX server. And then we can also, there we go, we can see they use a Google Mail, uh, Google, Yes, so they use Google services for their email. That's important and useful to know. And then for uh, NS servers, name servers, we can use, let's see, name server, to DNS name, name server. So by right mouse clicking and going here, we can see Google Cloud uh, and some other stuff that's associated with these domains, name servers. And finally, we can type DNS. So there's actually a number of different DNS queries you can make. Community Edition may be uh, partially restricted in how many results it can bring back, but in general, you can learn a lot about the DNS settings and uh, other websites that might be located on the, zone, on the domain from the DNS. So we'll do a couple things. First, we'll do two domains DNS, which should give us any other uh, domains that are on the same DNS server, and then also two DNS name interesting. So you can try a couple of these transforms and see exactly what happens. But in general, if you do something like uh, find common DNS names, you can see two DNS servers pop up. And then if we do two DNS names uh, via interesting, this will give us a new set. So we can see we've got two DNS servers now that are responsible for looks like a mail server and then a wildcard in use. Now to find more information about the DNS, I can also refer to the website and by typing DNS into the transform window, I can click to DNS name, enumerate host names numerically and just go with the default settings and then to IP address DNS. So this gives me the IP address of the DNS uh, server and I can click to DNS name, other DNS names to kind of uh, enrich this and see if I can find more DNS servers on the same IP address. And here we can see, whoa, a bunch of interesting stuff. So we can see violin and viola that wonderhowto.com, outdoor games, OnePlus, I guess for that cell phone, and some other interesting things that I won't go too much more into, but you can see that there's a whole bunch of DNS servers that have now been added that we didn't know about before. So from just the domain, we've now gotten all these other um, DNS servers that refer to other parts of the website we never would have known about had we not done this kind of research first. So now that we have these DNS servers, we can select everything by pressing Command or Control A, 
And then on the right side, we see that there's this little window that allows us to organize our stuff by the type of entity. So I can select then within this all of the DNS servers and attempt to resolve them to IP addresses because that's the next step. So from our DNS servers or MX servers or NS servers, we're going to find as many IP addresses as possible because that will give us the ability to learn more about what this organization has and find different ways that we can hopefully get in or understand more about what it is they're doing. So I'll go ahead. It's going to let me do this resolution. It looks like we found a couple different new IP addresses. So we can see here they are by selecting all and grabbing these, we can take the next step up, which is to resolve these to a net block. So IP addresses will be located in a block of IP addresses that are allocated to a particular provider. And we'll use the uh, to net block using routing, routing info to get hopefully the most um, accurate different picture we can of the net blocks involved in this organization's structure and the services they provide. Now this isn't a complete picture, we can enrich this much further, but we kind of want to hurry down the chain and get these hard details about the organization. So once we can attribute them positively to this organization, we can go back up the chain and start enriching the data that we've already found and positively attributed. So now we've yielded a couple different net blocks. We can grab these and then select only the net blocks. And when we select them, we can look for the AS number. Now the AS number is a top level service number that is provided by telecommunications companies and such to uh, provide a, a large set of switches that uh, all kind of operate the same. And this will give us an indication of like a server or, or something else that has a whole bunch of different services running on it. And we can see that we have a server or an AS number in Mountain View and then a server in Los Angeles, California. So by doing this, we were able to start with the web domain and they very quickly locate the physical location of a major chunk of their uh, you know, network architecture. And we can even start to see the subdomains and, and sub uh, DNS servers that are distributing traffic and responding to requests across the website. So in order to take the next step on this, now we've gone all the way down the chain, we can take all the data we have, like the AS numbers, and by selecting everything and then selecting just the AS numbers, we can go back up and from the AS numbers, attempt to find net blocks, which can yield a whole bunch of results depending on whether or not this organization owns its own uh, AS number or if they're just using someone else's. So we'll attempt this in this case, being prepared for possibly a lot of different results. And again, you should remember that net blocks are huge ranges of IP addresses. So here we've generated a whole lot of them and upstream, if we were to select these and then enrich them further to find, let's say, DNS servers within them. So we're going to try to find any websites associated with our target by jumping up the chain a bit and looking for DNS because we can see right in the domains, oops, DNS, whether or not they're relevant to our target. So this will run all these transforms and we see, boom, we've expanded our data substantially. And now we can see uh, Google user content, so we can get an under wow, it's still going. We can get an understanding of subservices they use. Uh, we can see lightcrest.com is a, a service that's listed. We can see cryptonic.com, um, uh, a number of other things that the website likely uses to facilitate its services. And we can expand on these uh, initial things we found the DNS servers like violins of Viola, uh, phishing.wonderhowto. Uh, gs5.wonderhowto, we can start to discover more DNS servers that might point us to interesting things. So we've now expanded on the DNS servers. So let's select the interesting ones that we found, uh, particularly the wonderhowto ones that we found. And let me stick it to these. Driver safety wonderhowto, cool. cool. Uh, and then we will attempt to find websites. Two websites by querying the ports. So this should resolve a whole bunch of websites associated with these um, DNS servers. And this will give us a, a fingerprint on exactly what it looks like on the website side of things where all these DNS servers are pointing to various sites. We're going to look and see if we can actually resolve them and pin them down to websites they refer to. 
So this is going back up and now we're at the website phase again. The next would be to query the websites for the domain names associated and then begin looking for you know, other commonalities since we've enriched our data to this kind of much, much larger set. So I'm actually gonna select all the DNS servers and go ahead and enrich them just so we have some data to work with. And then I wanna zoom out and show you a couple different ways you can look for patterns by changing the view and kind of understanding the way this data is being pulled in and what it means. And even if you're a beginner, this view should give you some perspective on what you're looking at. So let's try to resolve some more websites from this um, now that we have a larger sample size. It should take a little bit of time, but as you can see, we've got some results back and now we can start playing with this final step a little bit further. So some of these kind of look like, kind of look a little garbagey. These don't look like real domains. They probably just resolve. These are something.net. These are probably processes that resolve something that's not public facing. I don't really know, but we can also see a bunch of wonder how to domains um, have already resolved or are resolving now. So if we zoom out, we've gone all the way back up to two domains from starting with a single domain. We're still, still getting results into our map and we can see by selecting these various views on the left side, much more detailed uh, relationship graphs of like how this data is coming together. Now you can only show so much in a higher, uh, like hierarchical graph like uh, this, but if you were to switch it to a more circular graph that shows you know, hubs and spokes, basically, um, different data points coming off of a common data point rather than kind of a top-down view, you can see here that there's very clearly a couple sources of uh, a lot of activity, things that maybe there's a lot of different services centered around or things they've chosen to invest in heavily. And on the other side here, we have little clusters which indicate individual net blocks or things that have uh, you know, basically a lot of different websites in common, and we can tell that all these services are associated with this common series of uh, net blocks. So as we discover these as individual points and kind of discover how the organization is using them, we can learn to very quickly enumerate them and begin to be able, here we, here we go, we can see we're now finding websites for um, wildcardanduse.ceramics.wonderhowto.com. That's not a website we probably would have been able to find otherwise, but if there's any vulnerabilities or if we can start scanning this stuff or using as, it as targeting for more advanced, um, more active reconnaissance methods, this is the kind of open source intelligence uh, information we can use to target more active methods and dig a little bit deeper into any of these results that we find that particularly interest us. So after we get this finished, the best way that we can uh, do uh, some sort of report or some sort of uh, overall understanding of this is to take a step back and analyze our goals and see what we found uh, and what can facilitate that. And that's kind of what this whole process is for. So if you like this kind of investigation, this is just one way that you can use something like Maltego to build this kind of data picture of any sort of information or investigation you would want to build. Uh, that does, doesn't just apply to cybercrime and uh, cyber weapons lab. This is also used for business intelligence and you know the kind of uh, like spy work that you have to do when you don't have access to data directly and you need to pull it in from something as simple as a simple domain name. So that's it. Network fingerprinting with Maltego can set the stage for discovering specific vulnerabilities, allowing an attacker to design a technical attack that otherwise would require too much information to be practical. By using these sorts of fingerprinting techniques, we can discover the configuration of networks that might be really expansive or have a lot of different moving pieces, which allows us to target the most uh, convenient one when designing an attack and avoid unnecessary effort or extra expense when we could, should be focusing on something that would be more efficient. So to do this, we'll be exploring relationships, building a complete understanding, and generally profiling the target to be the most efficient we can possibly be when we're actually moving into the attack phase of uh, some sort of like hacking engagement. So this should give you an understanding of how this sort of research works. And we hope that you enjoy this piece on OSINT because we love talking about it. And also thank you guys so much for getting us up to 10,000 subscribers and 100,000 views on our first video. Because of that, we would love to hear your feedback on more great ideas. Be sure to hit us up with more comments, make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Cyber Weapons Lab.